Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, for he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Giving honor to God, and who's the head of my life, to Pastor Monroe, who have afforded us this opportunity, to these fine brothers of the cloth, to the officers, members, and friends, uh, visitors and sinners, if there be any, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Yeah. Amen. And, and when it's hot like this, I got sense enough to get on down the road yeah. and catch that train before it pulls off. Amen. So I won't tarry. Um, I'm glad Sister Tracy and the pastor and all them sang because I was going to call on my wife to sing. I think that's why she took her time getting here. <laughs> but uh, I won't fool with her today. Amen. But there's a word from the Lord found in 2 Kings, the 7th chapter. And we'll skip around a little bit, verse 1, verse 6, verse 16, and verse 18. And we really could start in uh, the 6th chapter and the 24th verse. But we're in 2 Kings, the 7th chapter, uh, verse 1. Then e Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate. And then in verse 6, it reads as follows. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear noise of, of chariots and noise of horses and even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians. And then verse 8 says, And when the lepers came to the utmost part of the camp, they went in to one tent and did eat and drink, and carried then silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. And then uh, verse 16 and the uh, uh, verse 16, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians, so a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. And verse 18, and it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow, about this time, in the gate of Samaria. If it be the will of God for a little while, I want to talk about God can change a famine into feasting. God can change a famine into feasting. And look like God been preaching that all. I could get a benediction from Sister Bree who said, I can go to the Lord in prayer and he can work it out. I can give the benediction uh, from Reverend Mack who said, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched by an infirmity, but we can boldly go to the throne of grace from, uh, from the pastor who said, God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Uh, Brother Green said there's a lifting in the building because I know where my help come from. And then Sister Tracy said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. What was he trying to say? Sometimes your setback is a setup for your comeback. All, right. All the fix is in because the God I serve is able. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time, never late. But for a little while, and I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know who God is talking to. Maybe your husband not acting right. Maybe your children not acting right. Maybe they're acting funny on the job. But the word is in, God can change a family to a feast, to feasting. Because all you got to do is trust him. Somebody said, I trust in God wherever I may be. If on the land, on the raging sea, he makes the rose an object of his care. 
He guides the eagle through the trackless air. I know my heavenly Father watches over me. Somebody said, I trust in God wherever I may be. And so I'm trying to get us this morning to see after all that preaching that's already gone on and the singing and the praying, God is trying to tell somebody, just trust me. While you trying to figure it out, I done already worked it out. All you got to do is come out of where you are. And, and, and so in this uh, passage of scripture, I see desperate conditions. But I see God bringing prophecy. I see the providence of God. I see the promises of God. I see paralysis analysis or cautious investigation, but I see also the prophecy fulfilled. Right. And so under these desperate conditions, we see that God is a God who will punish. Don't get it twisted. God is not a sissy. God is not a patsy. You can't just treat him any kind of way and get by with it. Uh, the price has been paid. The penalty has been satisfied. Ah, the purchase has been made, but there is a punishment. And sometimes not only are we punished for sin, we're punished by sin. Uh, somebody said, blame it on the alcohol, but that alcohol will not only make you act a fool, it'll, I think Jamie Foxx said that, but, but, it'll, but it'll eat your liver up. Sometimes not only are we punished for sin, we're punished by sin. But, and, and so, but, but the Bible says, whom the Father loveth, he will chasten and scourge everyone. And, and it says, you know, if you don't know, he'll whoop you with a few stripes. But if you do know and supposed to know better, because Big Mama and them say, if you know better, you ought to do better. Right. But then you'll be punished with many stripes. But, but in this punishment phase, we see that, that, that uh, in verse 24 it says, after this, uh, ben had there got all the fellas together and said, well, if I couldn't send that little group and do nothing with them, I'm, I'm going to get all the boys, and we're going to go up there to Samaria, and we're going to do something with them, folks. Right. But look like they ought to have learned when they went to Elisha's house and got dealt with that they wouldn't come back fooling with the people of God anymore. Brothers and sisters, there is an enemy. And I think that's why the pastor had Tracy to sing that song. But what he meant for evil, God meant it for good. We have an enemy. There's a war going on. And we need to put our war clothes on and get in the army of the Lord and, and fight till we have to die. Somebody said, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Well, we too comfortable. We at ease in Zion. And, 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 and we want, you know, some people make things happen. Some people wonder what happened. And we just wondering what happened and letting things go on. But, but we got to get in the fight and fight the good fight of a soldier of Jesus Christ. And so, so, so this writer of Kings is writing uh, uh, to the exiles who were already in, in captivity, trying to let them know how they got there and, and, and some of the things that went on. And he said, you know, after this, they, they, they went by Elisha's house and tried to mess with him, and his little servant got all messed up. And Elijah said, Lord, open up his eyes so that he can see what I see. A lot of times what we see in the physical is the fruit. But the root is in the spiritual, and while we get all worked up and messed up, God already handling it. God already dealing with it. And, and when he opened up his eyes, he saw chariots of fire. And, and they came there because every time they tried to make a move, Elisha told the king what they was going to do. And, and look like if God keeps checking you and turning you around and, and trying to point you in the right direction, you ought to get it together or at least leave it alone. And they couldn't get it together or leave it alone and, and, and kept on fooling with God's children. And it's a dangerous thing to mess with God's children. He said, touch not my prophet, my anointed, and do my prophet no harm because uh, you're not messing with them, you're messing with me. And vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so they, this enemy of God and, and, and didn't have any sense and he kept on fooling with God's people. But, and, and then he changed his tactics and, 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 and we have an adversary. He knows how to fight. And he'll attack you at your high point. He'll attack you at your weak point. It doesn't make him any difference. If you like hip, lips, and fingertips, he'll send it to you. Right. 
You one that may not play the lottery, he'll let it get up to a, to a million, to $200 million, and then you'll go to thank. And if he can't get you one way, he'll get you another. Paul said, every time I would to do good, evil is all around me. The things I allow not, I do, and the things I do, I allow not. But, but, but he know where you're weak at, he'll attack you there. If that don't work, he know where you're strong at. He'll let you get the big head thinking you all that and you ain't that. And so we're in a war. And sometimes the enemy is not just Satan, sometimes it's sin, sometimes it's self. And, and, and Paul said, I'm the chief among sinners and I have to beat myself daily. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should become a castaway. And so we have to put our selves in check. But, but he tried to change, and they'll use power, money, and sex, whatever it is that it takes to get you. And if that don't work, you fool around and get assassinated. But thanks be to God that, that, that you can have your integrity. You can be like the Hebrew boys, I will not bow. Whatever you do, I'm not going to stoop, but I'm going to stand for the Lord. And when you stand for God, never tell never say, I put three of them in the fire, but it's four of them in there. God will mess up your arithmetic. There's four of them, and the fourth one look like the Son of God. And so there's a, a famine, and in a famine there's hunger and, and lack of resources and this type of thing. And, 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 uh, but, and it says that the seeds didn't just go on for a little while, but it went on until they started eating donkey head and bird doo-doo. And somebody say, hard times will, 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 will make a jackrabbit mess up. But I stopped by to tell you hard times won't uh, uh, make you or break you but they will define who you are. Right. Whatever you'll do for a million dollars, you'll do for one dollar. Just, just, just let things get hard enough. Somebody says it's the principle of the matter, Smokey. All right. So if you won't do it for a million dollars, you won't do it for one dollar. But, but they, they were going through this thing and, and in the midst of this famine, we, we see the king start talking crazy when it gets tough. Folk will start talking crazy. He start talking about God. He start talking about the preacher. And, and, uh, but I have to give him credit. He didn't hide behind the wall. Sometimes when it gets tough like it is now, where are our leaders? Yeah. 